hello and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Fighters Anthology. Now this is actually a re-recording, so I did this episode originally, but uh, when I was editing it, I discovered I bumped my microphone off, so I made up a new pilot and played through to get to this mission, because unfortunately you can't go back and replay missions you've already played, so... But uh, just an update on what actually happened is we shot down a MiG, our wingman shot down a MiG, and um, we actually made our first non-failure of a landing. We got a rating of 48%, so we're going to see if we can uh, repeat that success this time. So, Van Holo Harbor, USS Kitty Hawk, CVA 63, date May 11th, local time. 0700 hours. Weather clear. Situation. For President Nixon's resolution, the linebacker offenses saw an intensified effort to mine the principal harbors providing North Vietnamese Navy with logistical support. Mission objective. Escort a flight of A6s as they lay mines in Than Hoa Harbor. You must protect the strike aircraft until they finish their waypoints. Order of battle. Recommended aircraft, F8J. Recommended weapons, AIM-9B. Threat suppression data, ground opposition none. Air opposition, MiG 21s and MiG 17s. And it looks like we'll start off right next to the A6s and we'll follow them around the harbor. We do have an AWACS for support. We'll take our F4J again. And this looks good, so we will fly. So, we're gonna stick to our assigned waypoints for now. We will ask uh, our AWACS, our nearest bandit is 10 o'clock low. So let's go to two thirds throttle. And we'll change our course a little bit. We see we got our wingman here. And 12 o'clock low. So we'll switch to sparrows, and uh, if we go to range while scan mode, we can see they're directly ahead. So we'll wait for them to come in the range. And here's the A6s that we're escorting. And the A6 was the principal medium the heavy attack aircraft of the U.S. Navy during the Vietnam War and throughout much of the Cold War too. Uh, I believe it had two non-afterburning engines. Um, so it was a subsonic aircraft only. Could carry, I believe, 20,000 pounds of, uh, of payload bombs, missiles, rockets, what have you. And it had a, a crew of two, I think, although it may have been four. And I believe Senator McCain actually, um, actually flew, either flew one or flew in one when he was shot down and captured in the Vietnam War. Um, but yeah, they served a long time. They pioneered a lot of technologies like um, special sensors that helped them to fly, you know, nap of the earth, you know, right up against the ground to try to reduce uh, the radar visibility. Um, and they were, they were a pretty good workhorse. They were eventually retired because with the adoption of the payload of the Super Hornet, they had a payload just as great as the A6. It was faster. I don't know how the range stacked up, as I do know, you know, fighter jets are a lot thirstier as far as fuel, but, um, you know, it could carry just as much, it could carry newer weapons, here's our MiGs, so I believe they were eventually retired just because they were, well, one, they were old, and they were redundant, although there were plans to make a, uh, a new variant of the A6, so the lows fell through, especially with the end of the Cold War. So let's go down here. We technically have a look down shoot down radar on this plane, but uh, yeah, I don't know how well the um, the game models that, but I'd like to just avoid the missile having ground clutter uh, messing up the its reception. I mean, these sparrows are unreliable enough already. So we see uh, this value here, this in-range value, it's at 30% right now. That's basically your probability of a hit. And now, it does depend partially on your range, but it also, uh, 
It also depends on uh, the facing of the target, too. For example, right now we have a nice side view, so our uh, we're going to have a you know a better lockdown because there's more of the plane reflecting back at us. And now you see they turn toward us and our uh, oh, that, <laughs> that went better than uh, than it did in the actual campaign. We had, we had to fire two sparrows to uh, get those hits. One, three, three. To and, um, you know, if the target you got coming from the side, there's more of the target facing you, or it's like from the front and the rear, it's got a smaller profile, so that it does adjust the uh, hit probability for that. And, um, what was that? oh, yeah, so the A6 became redundant, you know, when we came up with the Super Hornet. Especially since that had uh, one and two seater versions, and I believe the two seater is better optimized for things like ground attack because you have the guy in the rear who can do all the targeting and stuff, while the guy in front can focus on flying. And we're landing already, apparently. Uh, let's take this off. Oops. Take this off time compression. And probably go to 25% throttle. And, um, you know, it was similar for the other attack aircraft we used too. For example, in our last mission, we were teamed with A4 Skyhawks. Uh, they were the Navy's principal light attack aircraft throughout the early parts of the Vietnam War. And, um, they were pretty decent. They were subsonic, just like the A7, but they were highly maneuverable. So a lot of poorer countries actually use them as there we go, use them as fighter aircraft because you can mount them with sidewinders and they were pretty maneuverable. So if you were facing other poor countries who didn't have you know supersonic fighters, it was a decent investment you could make, and they were often used and possibly even still used by some countries in the aggressor role for uh, training pilots how to dogfight. And that was replaced by the A7, which is actually a development of the F-A uh, Crusader. And the A7 could carry more payload, I believe it could go faster, further range, uh, better sensors. And that served as the U.S. Navy's principal light attack aircraft throughout the rest of the Cold War. And it ended up being replaced by the Hornet, because the Hornet could do pretty much everything the A7 could but it could also dogfight because it was designed as a fighter as well. So, you know, specialized ground attack aircraft just kind of became redundant. We're home. After a while. Which, in a way, it's kind of a shame, but, you know, you gotta do what's best for the budget and what's best for, you know, if you... On an aircraft carrier, you can only fit so many aircraft, so... You know, why, why why have an aircraft that can only do one thing when you can have an aircraft that can do two things equally well? And, um, oh, let's see. What else did I go over? Uh, you may have noticed the flight modeling in this game is, uh, it's not the most realistic. I believe what they did is they made a, uh, I believe they made a single flight model and just tweaked it to suit the individual Very aircraft. Well. So, you know, technically, like, the AC-130 will have the same flight profile as... The same base profile as the, uh, I'll say, the uh, F-14, but their values have just been tweaked along the scale. Fire. More throttle. Three mile. Fire. 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 Yeah, not 
quite back in the hang of this Fire. game, but... Two miles. Go right. Go right. Fire. 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 Call the ball. Fire. Fire. All right, let's try to line up. On the ball. Lower. Lower. Oh, Brakes. Lower. And Lower. touchdown. Fair landing. <laughs> we got the stall one. So again, if anyone has anything specific they want me to talk about, put it in the comments and I'll talk about it to the best of my ability. And uh, let's see if I can do, that was a little close there. Yeah, if you hit, if you run it, like even if I run into that uh, cat officer, uh, that's like an instant kill for me. As far as the game's concerned, so we'll park there and let's uh, we'll wait for a wingman to land. Um, so I, yeah, this, this, as you can see, this was a pretty easy mission. At least with the F4, if you took the F8 Crusader, then because your radar is shorter, I mean, you could still ask the AWACS where the enemy is, but. You can't take out those MiG 17s at range like we did, so in the end, they can get closer to those A7s and they can normally get a shot at taking them down because they will ignore you and focus on the A7s. Or, sorry, the A6s, excuse me. Oh, <laughs> I thought he was going to run into us. Oh, wow, we parked almost perfectly aligned. So, that is the nice thing about this game is. You know, especially when you get three wingmen, you can see these guys all up close, and it's really quite beautiful. And you can tell if we were to park on the hangar, like I or on the elevator, like I did um, in my original playthrough of this, uh, you see that we don't even fit completely on the elevator. So, based off of that, I'd say this carrier is about at maybe half as big or smaller than what it should be, because we. Sh you should be able to fit two of uh, two phantoms on that elevator, I believe. So, but yeah, that's the uh, mission. We have successfully mined the Fanhoa Harbor. Debrief, USS Kitty Hawk, CVA-63. Date, May 11th, Mission Fanhoa Harbor, resolution success. You taught those new pilots a valuable lesson in air combat. Keep up the good work. Uh, we got a landing grade of 50%, or a wingman got... 46%. Now, I always thought that the wingman automatically got a 50% landing grade regardless, but apparently that's not the case. We each got a kill. No one bothered to hit us. We'll do the obligatory maintenance on our Phantom. And our next mission will be armed recon over NVA supply routes. So we'll be shooting up trucks. And, um,. That concludes this Let's Play, and I'll see you back next time.